Welcome to Scratch Coding. This is a series of videos to help you learn to code using Scratch. With Scratch, you can create your own stories, puzzles, and games, and whatever else you want to create. You're in control of everything in the programs that you write. Create a free account at scratch.mit.edu so you can do coding with us. Today, we're going to create a racing game. The blue car won. If the car touches the wall during a race, he has to start over. And if the cars touch each other, it makes a crashing sound. Let's look at the code. Let's look at the background. If we go to the backdrops tab, we can see there's two backgrounds. The start screen and the racetrack. And there's no code for that. But there is code for this finish line and this start button. So when the green flag is clicked, the code for the start button says to show. So it's not invisible anymore. But when you click the start button, it's going to change to the other backdrop and then it'll hide the start button. I just added all that code for fun. We don't have to do that in the code today, but you can add that to your program if you want to. Let's look at the cars. You see I picked a car that has a top and a bottom. That made it complicated when I wrote the code. When the cars get all the way around here, I don't want them to drive upside down on this part of the track, and so I had to flip them around. So I had to add this code just to flip the car around. This if touching color black, there's nothing else black on the screen, so whenever a car goes all the way around and then gets to right here, he'll say, I won. The red car has the same code. If the red car touches the black, he'll say, I won. When the green flag is clicked, the car has to hide or else they'd show up here on my start screen. So when the green flag is clicked, they hide and they go to their beginning spot and they point to the right. And then forever it checks and if they're touching, this code right here, if they're touching yellow, then they have to start over. And you'll see if I have it pointing sideways, when they start over, they point back in the 90 degree direction. If the blue car is touching the red car, then it's going to play that crunching sound. And in the last lesson, we learned how to navigate a sprite around. The only thing different about moving the cars around than in the last lesson when we did a maze is we have two cars. Instead of just one character going around a maze, we have two cars going around a track. And so the blue one uses the right arrow, left arrow, and up arrow. And the red one uses the A, D, and W keys. So one person's going to have to use W to go forward, and the other person in the race will use the arrow key. If you can write this code, you'll be able to race your friends. Let's start a new project and see if we can do this again. First, let's get a new stage or background. There's not one already there, so we need to draw one. We'll go to paint. You could get the paintbrush and draw a track if you wanted to, 
but today I'm going to start off with a circle. This reshape tool will make it so it's not exactly a circle. I'll show you. I can add a couple more dots. And then drag this part in. As you're dragging this around and fixing your track, keep an eye on this up here because this is what the game actually looks like. After you like the shape of your track, go back to the select tool and copy it and paste it. Now you have two of them and make one of them smaller. And make him fill with green. I should have colored the whole background green in the beginning because now I can't just dump a bucket of green in the back. I have to make a shape to dump into the back. So when you're doing it, make sure you draw a rectangle over the whole thing and make it whatever color you want your background to be because now I have to add the background color and then bring all these shapes to the front. See they're behind that? So I'm going to just click on it and bring it to the front and click on this one and bring it to the front. It's like they're sitting on top of each other and you can just set them behind each other. So now I can get this one and make it cover the whole back. But it would be easier if I did the green background first. So there's my racetrack. Ooh, this is going to be really tough right here, this skinny part. When you have the reshape tool selected and you select one of your dots, see how that changes the shape when you manipulate these lines? You can turn them to change your angle and make it, it didn't look quite round and so that's why I wanted to go back and mess with it. See, just making that a little longer made it go a little rounder instead of turning so sharp. Now we have a racetrack, we need a car. Let's get rid of Scratch. You're welcome to look in your sprites and see if you have a race car that you like, but I don't have one from the top and I'm not gonna select these. I wanna draw my own. And I do that with the paintbrush, just like we did for the background. I need to get all these different pieces of the car to be in a group together. So I've got the select tool, select all the parts and group them together. Then I'll be able to move them at the same time. And I need to center my car right in the middle of my picture. And then over here he needs to be smaller. Really small so you can get around the track. Now I see a problem with my background. If one of my cars runs into the other car, they're going to be touching black because the tires are black. I need to change the color of the edge of my track. And I want it to be the same color yellow for the inside of the track. So I'll grab my dropper and suck up some yellow. Now all the edge is the same color yellow. Now how are we going to make our car move? Click on the car. Right here you're drawing him in his costume. We're going to go to code. 
and we want him to move when we hit the arrows. When you touch a key, that's an event. When up arrow is pressed, his motion is going to be to go 10 steps. That works. So we need more events for the other keys. When right arrow is pressed, we're going to turn right 15 degrees. When left arrow is pressed, we'll turn left 15 degrees. And when down arrow is pressed, we'll move backwards. So that's going to be a negative 10. So already, we could go around the track. And if we just copied that code, you could race your friends with just this much of the game. Let's draw in a finish line. Go to the backdrops. Not the code for the backdrop, but the picture. Let's make the finish line a different color. And go back to the code for the car. And we need to say when he's touching that blue color, that he's going to say, I won. So if he's touching that blue color, he'll say, I won. Want to add some cheers? What kind of sounds do we have? All we have is a popping sound. This sprite only has a popping sound. We need to go get another sound. Click on the Sounds tab and go down here to choose a sound. Woo! Now we have a sound. Let's go back to the code for the car. Now we have that sound still. We still have the pop and we also have the clapping sound. So when we cross the finish line, we want the crowd to clap for us. If we ran this code, it would check to see if he's touching blue, and he's not, and so it would just pass this code up. We need to continuously keep checking to see if he's touching blue. We need that in a forever loop. So when the green flag is clicked, Forever, it's going to keep checking to see if he's touching blue. And I'm going to cheat. I'm just going to go backwards. <laughs> instead of going around the whole track. And we see that it works. Where is my car right now? You see he's on 2873 is his location. When the green flag is clicked... I want him to go back to 2873 no matter where he's at. But also, if he's ever touching yellow, I want him to go back to 2873. And I want him to point to the right. So if he's touching yellow, that's something that he's going to sense. That he's touching the color. Click the color. Get the dropper. Suck up some yellow paint. 
and put that in the forever loop. So forever it's going to check to see if he's touching blue or yellow. And it'll make him start over. I also want him to point to the right when I hit the green flag. We need somebody to race. We can right click on our car and duplicate. Let's go to car number two, change his costume, and make him red. We just need to change a few things about his code and we'll be done. So one of the things we have to change about the red car is what keys are used to move him because right now they both do the same thing when I hit the arrows. But the red car needs to use W, right should be D, left should be A, and down is S. Another thing we need to do is they don't need to start off in the same place. The red car needs to be up here. So his X position can start off at 28, but his Y position needs to be 105. And that's it. Now we have another racing game. Now it's your turn. Draw your background and a car and make it move with the arrows and then create another car and make it move with other keys and race your friends. This free coding lesson was provided by STEM in Games. Watch more lessons and keep practicing so you can create new worlds and games and make your ideas come to life. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.